Well, I'm at First United Methodist Church, the very first church that I served at under my pastor, Pastor Nick Harris. In fact, it was at this very place that Pastor Nick taught me over and over and over and over again about the power of your words. My pastor Nick would always make fun of the old saying, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can never hurt you. And he'd say, that's ridiculous. Of course, words can hurt you, and the right words can help heal you. Pastor Nick would always quote Proverbs 18, 21, that the tongue has the power of life and of death. Our words, they have the power to build up or to tear down, to lift or to destroy to bring life or death. Unfortunately, too many people have experienced the pain of toxic words, those words that crush and hurt. In fact, the Bible contrasts very clearly life-giving words and toxic words. Proverbs 12, 18 says, reckless words pierce like a sword. Those are toxic words, they hurt and they pierce. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. That's a life-giving word. Proverbs 15, 4 says, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. That's life-giving words. But, here's the toxic words, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Unfortunately, chances are pretty good that you've had your spirit crushed by toxic words at one point or another. Someone said, I wish I never had you. You're no good. You're pathetic. You're stupid. I'm leaving you. I wish we'd never married. You're nothing like your brother. Those words crush and they're toxic. On the other hand, there's those life-giving words. I believe in you. I'd marry you all over again. You're the best. God made you so special. I'm so thankful for you. It was at this very place that I learned from my pastor the power of your words. When so many others would speak toxic words, my pastor spoke life-giving words. To a young guy, he said over and over and over again, Craig, I believe in you. I'm so thankful for his life-giving words. I'm sitting in what was the old sanctuary, and this is actually the place where my pastor, Pastor Nick, taught me to teach life-giving words. It was also here that I learned the very important principle that I should guard my heart against toxic words. Nick would always tell me, he'd say, Craig, you can't help what other people say about you, but you can help what you believe. Don't let the opinions of others, don't let their words talk you out of what God wants you to do. In fact, it was right here that uh, Nick helped me write my very first message and I was going through the traditional ordaining process. And when I got into a, a meeting with a group of um, the leaders of the denomination, they didn't actually like what they saw. And looking back, there's probably a lot of reasons why they didn't, I was cocky arrogant, kind of a know-it-all, a little bit rebellious. And so after I went through that process, at the end, a group of people said some words that shook me at my core. And as I was one step away from the initial ordination, this group said, Craig, we're not sure whether you're called to ministry or not. We're not gonna ordain you. And I never will forget those words. Uh, my whole world came crumbling down in just a few moments over the words spoken by someone else. We're not sure if you're called to ministry or not. I got in my little geo prism, which made me mad to be stuck in a prism, and I cried all the way home over the words that someone said. And the next day I came back to this place and I walked into Pastor Nick's office, which was just over to my side, and I broke down and I cried uh, my brains out. And I never will forget when Nick looked at me and he said, Craig, Back when I was going through the process, they said the same thing to me. Nick looked at me and said, Craig, I want you to know I believe in you. I believe you're called. And even more than me, I want you to know God believes in you.